up until now we've been looking at area formulas, finding the amount of stuff inside a flat shape. Now we're gonna look at volume formulas, finding the amount of stuff in a three-dimensional shape. And we'll start with the most basic shape, which is a rectangular solid. And that's gonna be your basic box. So if we think about a three-dimensional box, a three-dimensional box has three different dimensions. It's got a width, a base, and a height. Sometimes we call one of them a length. Either way, it's the same idea. The way we get the volume of a rectangular solid is we multiply all those dimensions together. So we have base times height times the width. So for example, if I've got this box here, and one direction is 24 sevenths, the other direction is 3 halves, and the other direction is 14 thirds. All we have to do to find the volume of this box is multiply those dimensions together. 24 over 7 times 3 over 2 times 14 over 3. And what's nice about multiplying fractions in this case is we can reduce, reducing out the 3's, uh, reduce out the 14 with the 7, leaves behind a 2 on top, and then I can even reduce out the remaining 2's, and so I'm actually just left with the 24. So in this case, the volume of that rectangular solid was 24 cubic units. Another type of solid we might need to work with is called a cylinder. A cylinder is kind of like a Campbell's soup can. It's got a round top and bottom, and it's tall all the way up with that round shape. On the soup can, we've got a height, and we're also going to be interested in the radius of the circle that is on the top and the bottom. The volume of a soup can, or of a cylinder, is pi r squared times the height. So for example, if I had a soup can that was six units all the way across, and it was eight units tall. If I wanted the volume, the first thing I'd notice is the volume requires the radius from the center to the edge, not all the way across like we have. Well, if all the way across is six, from center to the edge is three, so volume is going to be pi times the radius, which is three, squared times the height, which is eight. Well, 3 squared is 9 times 8 is 72 of these pi's. But we also know that pi is approximately equal to 3.14. So if I want an exact answer, I can do 72 times 3.14 and get 226.08 cubic units. Another shape we often want the volume for is called a cone. You can think about it as an ice cream cone. It's got a round bottom and a pointy top. It's an upside down cone. With the cone, we're interested if we know the radius and the height of the cone. We say that the volume is 1 third pi r squared h. It's actually closely related to the cylinder. It's just 1 third of that cylinder volume because it shrank all the way up to the top point. So for example, let's do a sideways cone for our example. Let's say this has a distance across the bottom circle of two, but from the point at the bottom all the way to the top, again, making a right angle like the height must, we're gonna call that a distance of 24. The volume then is 1 third times pi times the radius. Now notice two is the distance from end to end of the circle. We just want halfway across, so we're gonna call that one. The radius is one squared times the height of 24. Well, when we multiply that out, we get 8 times pi. And if we put the pi in our calculator, 8 times 3.14, we'll get about 25.12 cubic units for the entire cone. Let's do one more volume formula. Let's find the volume of a sphere. A sphere is your classic ball. It's a circle, and it's going to have some radius from the center to the edge. 
To find the volume of a ball or a sphere, this one's going to be 4 thirds times pi r cubed. So for example, if I've got a ball, that's a three-dimensional ball. My drawings aren't the best, sorry. But I know the distance all the way across the ball from one end to the other is 9. We could find the volume of that ball, which is 4 thirds times pi times the radius. Well, the radius is from the center to the edge. And if it's 9 all the way across, it's 4.5 halfway across. So 4.5 cubed. And if I put on my calculator that 4.5 cubed times 4 divided by 3, I end up with 121.5 pi as the volume of my sphere, which I spelled wrong. There's a p in sphere. There we go. And if I want to put that uh, 125.1 times the 3.14 that we know pi is equal to, we get 381.51 cubic units for the volume of the sphere. So with volume formulas, it's just about identifying the shape, applying the correct formula, and working it out on our calculator.